Hi, um, I'm using the same slide I just used in my last video clip to illustrate more reasons as to why distributors exist. In the, uh, in the first slide, we talked about, the first time around, how the distributor lowers the total procurement cost for customers. But if we drew a line right down the middle of this creature and said, what, what do the suppliers get out of this? And if you think about all these lines being consolidated, if in other words, if the suppliers want to have a direct relationship with 200 customers instead of one, then they would have to have 200 times more sales contacts. They'd have 200 times more local delivery costs. They'd have 200 uh, times more trade uh, credit collection issues. They'd have to have 200 times more inside sales uh, capabilities. So what happens is all the, the service-facing frontline people that distributors have when they go out and take care of customers, whether it's an outside sales, inside sales, trade credit person, uh, a truck stopping, they're really representing 100 suppliers or wearing 100 hats uh, potentially on any given any run. Now, obviously, if you deliver three line items in an order and all three line items come from a different supplier, only representing three suppliers in that particular order. But um, so what happens is distributors lower the total sales service cost, TSSC, if you will, for, for suppliers. And of course, they probably make a lot more customers available to the supplier very quickly. So that would be a, a, a key reason as to why distributors exist and benefit on a hub economic basis for, for suppliers. Uh, but there's more. If a customer, for example, calls up and says, hey, I have a very peculiar, weird problem. And of course, we're doing business with hundreds of customers like this, and in a year's time, we hear this problem multiple times. So to us, it's not rare, it's, it's more common. So in a sense, a distributor becomes a uh, sort of a consolidated, special problem-solving uh, creature uh, in the channel. Uh, maybe a little bit like a concierge person at a fancy hotel. People come down and say, gee, you know, I've got this problem. And of course, they hear that problem three times every night. So they got a Rolodex. They know exactly how to take care of it in a very efficient way. Another reason that distributors exist, let's erase this reason, is that the distributor's inventory serves as, as a uh, sort of a shock absorber. So if you think of a big, a big spring here, what happens is a customer calls up and says, whoa, I, I, I have an unusually big need. No problem. That's why we have safety stock. We have a, a lot of inventory that's here to support a lot of distributors. And statistically, some customers need a lot and well, others don't need it. So it, it all sort of averages out. Uh, if a customer wanted to call the manufacturer, they would say, well, you know, we've got this very rigid production schedule and, you know, we can only process things internally so quickly and so forth. They're just not set up to provide that immediate, uh, quick uh, response, extra overflow kind of issue problem. On the same, by the same token, when, when a distributor goes to call a manufacturer and says, look, I want to give you some stuff, the manufacturer may say, well, you know, normally our lead times are 10 days, but they just went out to 14 days or you know whatever. So again, that's one of the reasons that distributor stock safety stock is to serve as a buffer uh, and keep things flowing and going for the for the for the supply channel. Um, then the uh, the uh, another reason that you exist is if you think about the assets that are tied up here, primarily in inventory and receivables, but there are lots of proactive service bets that we can make every day. Should we call this customer? How often should we call this customer? Should we do extra work for this customer? Should we do a heroic thing for this guy? Should we put in special stock for that customer? These are all bets of resources trying to get a better return on investment down the road. And obviously, if I'm the proprietor, the principal of this, this, this little box, and most of the money in there is my money, uh, and I'm there for a long, long time, I'm going to make those bets a lot better every day than somebody who was a, a hired branch manager who'd be there on average 18 months, then turn over and works 42 hours a week because that's what they do. So. The, uh, the, the distributor provides uh, better, more efficient uh, uh, asset investment 
for li the least amount of investment, the highest return on, uh, and, on, on investment, service value, and so forth. And then the last uh, thing to think about is that, again, if, if I'm here and it's my business and it's all my money in there and some big customer says, well, look, uh, here's my peculiar problem, I can understand it and say, all right, we will craft a, pre a precision supply chain solution, a one-off solution for you. Sure, we generally do the same kind of service for other customers, but each one of these has got some, some peculiarities, some uniqueness to it. And so that's a, another job that really distributors exist is to, for big, bigger, better customers, to provide those precision supply chain solutions. So those are lots of reasons why middlemen of physical products are really here forever if they can, if they can address those main benefits on a very effective basis. Thank you.